Till now, I have been discussing with you diffraction from crystalline solids. And uh, now, I'll move on to diffraction from liquid and amorphous systems. And very briefly, I'll mention the special features of single crystal diffraction in this lecture. When we talked about crystalline solids, before that, in the general formalism of uh, neutron diffraction, if you remember, I introduced you to the potential energy as seen by a neutron, B of R twice by H cross square M sum over L B L delta R minus R. So this is a scattering amplitude for an arrangement of scatterers. So there are a scatterers at point L and they are scattering potential, total scattering potential is the sum of this delta function. In this expression, I haven't mentioned anywhere that this is crystalline. Crystalline. This is just a general arrangement of scatterers and I didn't assume crystalline and I also showed you that under Born approximation, the scattering amplitude of going from k to k prime wave vector is basically given by this expression where k prime vk is a Fourier transform of the potential. And then finally, I wrote the scattering intensity per unit solid angle d sigma by d omega has a coherent part coherent part where the coherent scattering amplitude is multiplied by the structure factor and then it also has a coexisting incoherent background which is coming from the fluctuation. This is a recollection of what we did. But in these expressions, no one have assumed that the material is crystalline. But these are solid and the atoms are fixed at some points. Now, Another question comes, when I am talking about liquids and amorphous systems, then for liquids, the atoms and molecules are moving around. So, for a liquid, the atoms and molecules are continuously diffusing inside the liquid. Then, a structure work, what will it show? So, if you remember, it was e to the power i omega t s q omega if i integrated it over omega i am supposed to get i q t and in this integration if i put t equal to 0 then it is an integral over s q omega d omega which gives you i q 0 or for most of our structure works, I can call it IQ or S of Q, which I will be measuring in a scattering experiment. So that means this gives me IQ 0 means time t equal to 0, but there is no defined origin of time. So basically, the experiment is done over a finite time, and I keep adding snapshots over snapshots over snapshots. And I get a time average picture which is same as what we get from a static particles at the sides. And so liquids, and I will show you experimental results for that, that liquids, liquids and amorphous first solids, solids have similar structure similar structure only in case of liquids I will add in case of liquids it's a snapshot and in case of solids solids it's a static picture, static picture. Otherwise, I will show you 
Structurally, they are similar. Amorphous solids and liquids, both of them are similar. Now, with this, <coughs> I would like to say that so far, I'll add up, we discussed the periodic array. But periodic array means they have long range order. Does it mean that liquids and amorphous material solids, they don't have any structure at all? Because they are disordered materials in our common parlance, it is not true. All of these, they also have local structure, close R structure, small R structure. I will give an example. Let's consider a case of sodium chloride. It's very simple to explain with respect to a molten sodium chloride salt. If I take a molten sodium chloride salt, then the, a central sodium atom, it will like to be surrounded by chlorine because it's ionic potential, ionic potential, ionic potential. So if I calculate the structure factor for this molten salt or G of R more in the real space and time with distance, then up to some distance your G of R is zero, pair correlation function is zero because nothing can come closer than that. It can be a hard sphere here with an ionic core, but after that the chlorine occupants will have a sharp peak and then it will fall. Then after that there will be most probably the chlorine number will go down, there will be more sodium, but then again there will be a second range of correlation and then oscillate and finally go to the density of the liquid. So you have, do have local structure and we talk about first sharp diffraction peaks in amorphous solids and liquids known as F S D P. So always these amorphous and so-called liquid and disordered materials, they do have local structure and this is of great interest in many cases because we would like to know the molecular and atomic arrangement in such liquids and I will uh, elaborate it with a few examples. So in case of periodic lattice, we do have a sum of delta functions if I take as a temperature effect. So my correlation function is a sum of sum of delta functions which are atoms sitting at location. And its Fourier transform <coughs> is this which is an intensity pattern that I will obtain if I do a diffraction experiment with a periodic lattice. I have just picked up a random one on lanthanum strontium magnesium data from our Druva diffraction machine. So here, because of periodicity, we also have lots of selection rules. For example, when I do the diffraction from a periodic lattice, I told you that a scattering vector Q has to be equal to G one of the reciprocal lattice vectors because I can define a reciprocal lattice in case of a periodic solid. In case of liquid and amorphous structures, we don't have a reciprocal lattice. So this kind of selection rules are not applicable to liquid and amorphous material. And because of this Q equal to G, I discussed with you before I went to diffraction problems that there is something called evolved construction where the scattering vector hits the evolved sphere every time the, there is a reciprocal lattice point. If there is a reciprocal lattice point cutting the evolved sphere, you will have a, a, a diffracted beam in that direction. We don't have this kind of peaks in case of liquid and amorphous systems, but what we have is something like this. This is as I told you just now, this is the, it is a simulated pattern 
for an arrangement of hard spheres. So hard spheres means the the spheres they can at best touch each other, and if their radius is, is r, then the minimum distance between the centers can be two r. Nothing can be below that, so that is why it is zero. So this is the two r. But then in this arrangement, because they are touching each other, you will have arrangement of other hard spheres around the central hard sphere, and then I will have a sharp thing. So I must mention it here for your. We should be cautious. When it is a center, the center is also not fixed. Any atom can be taken as a center, and but and then this local arrangement. So when I talk about this distribution, this is an. This is a average over a whole arrangement of spheres. and any any solid any sphere can be the center of our coordinate system and then you have this after that you have the second you can see what happens actually the second the second shell around the central atom central atom can be anywhere and it's a uh, average over various ensembles ensemble of the hard spheres so this average Shows of nearest and very sharp first peak in the G of R. This is G of R, G of R by R. Then there is a second peak. That is the second. So if I have a center here, the first one is pretty well defined, but the second one is diffuse. Second one is diffuse. Second one, third one is even more diffuse. And when you go to infinity. Or very far away, my infinity is a distance much much larger than the radius of the sphere, much much larger. Then you get a constant G of R because then it goes to the normal density of the liquid. So this is, you can see, this is what I get when I talk about a crystalline solid. This is what I get when I talk about an amorphous solid or liquid. So this is the and this is what we will be trying to understand and measure in our experiments using liquid and amorphous systems so how the pair collision function looks i have chosen some results from this using common materials metals that you are aware of copper aluminum nickel in solid form all of them they Form an FCC lattice. Uh, iron forms BCC. These are they are all called FCC lattice. So they are FCC or BCC. And this is what if you measure the S of Q, it will measure S of Q. Data taken from here, you can see, and you can simulate the same data using a random arrangement of spheres. And here. the experimental data and the fitted curves are shown for the copper copper aluminum and nickel so you can see that when we melt when they melt still they retain the local structure and their g of r evaluated from the fit of this are given on the top panel exactly what i talked to you about so hard spheres are a good point to start in case of liquid and amorphous system simulation in case of crystallography structure if you remember we talked about 32 point groups 14 bravais lattices and 230 crystal space groups so using those i mean so we can input the crystal structure as one of those space groups and also we can define the magnetic structures in so in terms of the propagation vector as an initial input in case of liquid and amorphous systems either we have to resolve resolve to direct fourier transform what i mean is when i'm talking about uh, we we are aware that g of r
is a reverse Fourier transform from S of Q. This is what we can measure experimentally, experimentally, mentally, and we can directly Fourier transform it to get G of R. But when I say we can directly Fourier transform it, that means this range of my experiment of Q has to be 0 to infinity. So this is how it looks for the common metals in molten form. Uh, as I told you that uh, this is an example, this is rubidium at 40 degrees centigrade taken from this reference and the structure factor, you can see the, the triangles are the experimental points and uh, the continuous curve is from a random dense packing of hard spheres and they match reasonably well I would say over the entire Q range. Reason being that just now I told you that I need to Fourier transform over a very large range of Q often that is not possible. For example, you see this experiment we could go to 20 angstrom inverse in the experimental setup. So that infinity gets curtailed to 20 and when you have a sharp drop, if you put SQ equal to 0 at that, then that sharp drop we know in Q space will give rise to artificial oscillations in G of R when you have Fourier transform. So here the authors they have done the other thing. They have actually simulated a dense packing of third spheres, calculated the GR, some way played with the GR and matched it with the experimental value. So similar to what we did in case of crystallographic material, here also we usually start from a model and then go ahead and create the S of Q and, con and check it with respect to the experimental S of Q. I will come to this in more details in the later parts. So in crystalline solids, we know FCC and HCP has a packing fraction of 0 0.74, highest packing fraction. Actually, uh, you can see this, that this is the FCC. Let me just uh, remind you, an FCC crystal is a face-centered crystal, which is actually, I, as I mentioned, it's your nickel, copper and aluminum. So you have got one at every corner, one of every corner and also one at the center of every face. That is FCC. That is FCC. Actually, uh, this drawing does not indicate the fact that you can consider the atom as a sphere. So, center there is a large sphere, then there is a sphere here. I am sorry that I have not sphere here, sphere here, and sphere here. So, four there are four atoms, atoms per unit cell in itself because we have uh, eight at corners and each shared by eight unit cell so each one contributes one eight so from the corners we get one atom and there are one two three four five six six faces and in the six faces we have got one atom at the center of each face. I am now drawing the size of the atom such that they touch each other. Then we have got six faces. Each is shared. Each sphere is shared by two neighboring unit cells. So there are three. So three. Uh, there are six faces, and each one is shared by half in one unit cell. Sorry, half. Uh, so it comes to three atoms from face centers and total there are four atoms atoms per unit cell now uh, I can show you that this is the diagram taken from Wikipedia so this is how they are packed so each one is 
Here it is one eighth. You can see this is half. These are half. This is one eighth. And there are four atoms per unit cell. So when you have four atoms per unit cell, then you can calculate out. If I look at the top face and try to fit in, then you can see this is one here, one touching, and the corner atoms are touching. So here in this FCC packing, each atom is touching the neighboring atom, and this is FCC. So you can see that if this is the side A of the unit cell and R is the radius of it, this comes to uh, A and 2A square, this square plus this, this is R, 2R, R, that means 2R, R, R, 4R. So A square plus A square is 2A square by Pythagoras theorem this is R 2 R R so 4 R square so equal to 16 R square or A square equal to 8 R square or A equal to 2 root 2 R so, in the, under the geometrical configuration that the atomic spheres are touching each other, each side is 2 root 2 R and I request you to find out that in this sphere there are 4 atoms. So, show that the packing fraction is 0.74 for an FCC. You can check it yourself and then this is same for uh, HCP also, same for HCP that is hexagonal close pair and so that is a but when you do random packing of spheres in case of amorphous materials I would like to mention that this is a very interesting problem one is that the maximum packing you can get up to 0.68 and not only that packing arrangement depending on the packing fraction or the number of atoms that you have got in a certain volume you can get various phases of the material. Before I get into the experiment proper, this is a very interesting problem. It's basically packing of hard spheres. There have been cases where people are talking about packing of cylindrical material. There are cases where one discusses packing of uh, flat biscuit-like objects. And uh, uh, Chaikin is one experiment, uh, experimentalist. Uh, who, who has done a lot of this work, this is one of his work. This, uh, here you can see that it goes from liquid to glassy phase depending on the density of the hard spheres. In between you also can see FCC crystal. Interestingly, at certain densities between liquid and glass, there is a liquid solid coexistence. And that means there are clusters of molecules which are actually these clusters are solid like but in between you have got gaps between them so there is a liquid solid coexisting phase and here they have given a line where the depending on the volume fraction we can see that uh, starting from 0.494 you get random close packing and crystal close packing. So random close packing gives me somewhere around 0.6364. Now the liquid and glassy state of Jamina, as I told you earlier, I promised you that the snapshot picture of a liquid is very very similar to the amorphous structure in a solid. So this is an experimental data. Whereas germanium, J, germanium, selenium, glass, it, the liquid and glassy state you can see the S of Q, they are very very similar. Except the liquid which is a dashed line, it is slightly less intense, but the structure is very similar. If I talk about shells around the central atom, they are very similar and also there are pre-peaks, reveal a peak at around one angstrom inverse. 
which is the first sharp diffraction peak. It, this is also observed in many glacial complex uh, liquids and almost similar values of Q around one angstrom universe. This is actually it's a characteristic of anomalous behavior in several properties. So this I will stop discussing here. So now what is the difference in the experimental setup? That's a very important thing. So what I want to say here that how a crystal diffractometer will be different from a liquid and amorphous diffractometer. Let us just start with the most basic quantity that we are aware of. Sin theta. Invoking quantum mechanics, we know that if we are going to see smaller and smaller r, smaller and smaller r, because the Fourier con convert from Q space, I need to go to larger and larger Q values. Now, typically in our crystal diffractometers, the Q values were of the order of 10 angstrom inverse. But now I am looking for local structure, local structure, structure. And I need to go to large Q. So, large Q, Q is desirable, desirable. But how do I go to large Q? That is because uh, this is this reason is because I am looking at local structure at smaller r values. Also, if I want to do a direct Fourier transform from Q space to R space, I need to go to large Q value. Now, how do I go to large Q values? One is that by increasing the theta. So my angular range has to increase. Another possibility is that if I can go to smaller lambda values, smaller lambda values, smaller lambda, as you can see from this expression, at the same angle, a smaller lambda or higher energy, energy will give, will give larger so either I, I mean so I can I need handle to go to larger angle that's possible I cover a larger angle using detectors but I can also use for the same angles another set of lambda which will give me larger Q values.